has begun. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I would like to call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the Easton School Committee meeting of Thursday, January 4th, 2024. This meeting will be conducted in a hybrid format where attendance by committee members may be remote or in person and remote attendance shall count toward quorum. This meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ECAT. For tonight's meeting, we have committee members Jennifer Starr and Jackie Wiseman participating remotely, and all other uh, committee members and attendees are present in Simmons Lecture Hall. This meeting is open to the public. Members of the public attending in person who wish to make comments will be invited to do so during the public comment period of tonight's meeting and will be required to state their name and address before beginning their comments. All right, so with that, um, we will move to the first item on the agenda, which is a vote to approve the Green Acres Landscape and Construction Company contract. Dr. Cabal? Thank you. So we have split the Richardson Olmsted Playground project into two components. North Playground, which if you're looking at the front of the building, is on the Olmsted side, or, uh, and then the, what we're calling the South Playground, uh, which is directionally south, is the uh, Richardson side of the building. So Olmstead is virtually done. We cannot progress any further uh, due to the weather. The remaining items are all weather dependent. We, I should say we did recently receive some benches and tables that are going to be put in as soon as they uh, are able to do that. But otherwise, the painting of the emergency route, which will be painted similarly to Blanche Ames, and wherever the corkeen surfacing needs to be placed, those areas will be blocked off until there's more temperate weather, weather because they, those are weather dependent items. We are, however, moving forward with the south playground. So that did go out to bid. We did receive bids on that, and we do have a contract. David Twombly, Director of Operations and Facilities is here to explain that to you and ask if uh, you have any questions before you consider that for a vote this evening. Thank you, Alicia. So yeah, so Alicia covered um, a few of the topics, but this would be the uh, Green Acres uh, contract, Green Acres Landscaping, who most of us are familiar with. They're actually the contractor for the North Playground, and they also did the work over at the Blanche Ames School. Uh, and again, this would be for the South Playground because there's a North and a South. Um, Tra Traverse Landscaping, they're the uh, designers for this particular project. They also were the designers at Blanche James and at the North Playground. Uh, the, as you know, the project is being funded through the CPA, Community Preservation Act, and this was approved at town meeting. The cost for this portion of the project for the South uh, Playground from Green Acres, their bid is $1,466,103 which is approximately $115,000 less than the high, than the next bid. So we actually got a very good bid. Traverse Landscaping and Perkins Eastman have recommended that we move forward with uh, Green Acres Landscaping. And in fact, uh, as, um, as I had mentioned, they did, they're doing the work on the North Playground and they've done a tremendous job. They've worked very well with the school administration, uh, especially the principals on various things that have come up uh, during the project. So we know them pretty well, and we're really glad that we're going to work with them on the next phase of this project. As Leisha mentioned, we follow the Chapter 30B procurement laws. Uh, Perkins Eastman put out a uh, bid document. We had approximately four bidders. Again, the next closest bid was $115,000 less or more than uh, the Green Acres bid. The um, estimated substantial completion for the uh, South Playground is August 25th, 2024. As soon as this contract is uh, approved and executed, uh, Green Acres will then begin procuring some of the uh, supplies and materials for the South Playground. So we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to try to purchase a lot of the materials, the benches and the uh, chairs and the tables and the bike racks. We're going to try to uh, purchase that at the front end. They'll probably start the work the actual demolition and construction type of work. That'll probably start around April vacation, early May. Um, just to give you an um, update on the North Playground, as Leisha had mentioned, Green Acres um, received the um, tables, chairs, benches, bike racks, trash receptacles, 
were all delivered to Green Acres at the beginning of this week. Uh, the last few days have been putting them together in their shop. They're actually going to be on site tomorrow installing a lot of the uh, equipment. They'll be back in April around the same time that they start the um, South Playground to install the Corkeen. The Corkeen has to be installed when the temperatures are 50 degrees and rising. So they can't be right now. It's just too cold to install the Corkeen. So that'll get installed again sometime late April or early May. Uh, with that, I will entertain any questions. Um, but again, we would need a motion to approve the Green Acres contract for $1,466,103. Uh, and just a reminder, this is being funded uh, primarily through the CPA. Okay. Great. Thank you, David. Any questions or comments from committee members? I just have a couple of questions coming up to speed on it. On the um, North Playground, is it on budget and on time? It yeah, so that's actually a very good question. So uh, between the two projects, between the um, North Playground and now getting into the South Playground based on the bids, we're about $421,000 under budget. So we're doing a really good job. Again, we're really happy working with Green Acres. We have a really good team, actually, overall. Traverse Landscaping, Perkins Eastman, and Green Acres, we're really, uh, we have a great team and we're all working really well together. But again, that's a really good question as far as uh, we are under budget when you combine both projects by approximately $421,000. And the only reason we are behind on our estimated completion date is because of the temperature with the change orders to change the surfacing that was originally designed. Got it. <clears throat> yeah, this is a really good project that uh, I have to say the uh, phrase one or the uh, North Playground has come out really well. Uh, it's been well received. Uh, Chris Getchell has been really involved with the project. Uh, we have meetings periodically with the construction team and things look really well out there. And are the kids able to use it before South is demoed? Yeah, so I think uh, we just opened that playground this week, the okay. uh, North Playground. So we are using that now. We can't use all parts of the playground because some of them are fenced off due to the Corkeen but the playground is usable at this point. I have a question on, um, on, the, um, on the bid for um, the South. Did it come in at comparable to the North? So like, are the prices of the, of the two comparable? Or I think if I remember correctly, I think the, uh, this is approximate, the North Playground came in around 1.6, mm -hmm. and this one came in at 1.4. And in fact, this bid came in a little bit lower than what the estimate was that Perkins Eastman had given us. So uh, we're right in line. I mean, again, we're $421,000 under budget based on what they had estimated at the beginning of the projects. Great. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really, I mean, we've lucked out. We have a really good contract at Green Acres. has been excellent to work with. Can't say that enough. And of course, we've worked with Perkins Eastman for a while. <laughs> so we have a really good team. So we're working well together. Great to hear. Um, does any other committee members have any questions or comments before we take a vote on this? No, it sounds good. Okay. All right, great. So would somebody like to make a motion to approve awarding the um, South Playground contract to Green Acres for some of one million four hundred sixty-six thousand one hundred and three dollars. Wiseman, so, so moved. Second, Deluca. Right. And roll call vote. Deluca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. <clears throat> Percio, yes. Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Thank you David. That was great. All right, we'll get into sign that this week. Uh, yeah, no problem. When you feel yeah. better. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, uh, let's see. Next up on the, we have two items on the agenda, um, a discussion and vote to approve a lease agreement with Southeast Rehab and Skilled Care Center, and then um, a discussion of uh, a draft zoning proposal. Um, and so my understanding is that, um, that we will need to push both of those to our January 18th meeting. Um, is that correct, Dr. Cabral, on item three? 
It is. Item three, uh, I just want to make sure that the center has an opportunity to review the document before I present it to the school committee. And number four, the uh, planning board is just asking for a little bit more time. Okay. All right, great. So I'll make a motion then to move items three and four um, off of this week's agenda and onto the uh, J January 18th agenda. Can I get a second? Wiseman second. And roll call vote. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Percio, yes. Okay, great. Um, next up on the agenda is a retirement of the an Oliver Ames science teacher, Dr. Cabral. Thanks. Mrs. Nancy Donahue came to Easton in September of 2004 as a physics teacher at OA. She received her professional teaching status in 2007. Over the many years that she's worked here, she has been the advisor uh, and co-advisor for the Green Team, the Science League Competition and Science Olympiad extracurricular activities. She's been the co-department chair of the science department since 2011. And she's been a mentor and uh, as well for, for many, many colleagues. After 20 years in the public school, she will be retiring on July 17th of this year. Uh, I'm not sure if she's able to attend this evening. She wasn't sure if she could. But I just, uh, you have a letter to read that she has mm -hmm. submitted. Um, I will say that um, I was able, I worked with Nancy uh, immediately on coming to the district. I started the curriculum leadership team and the department chairs serve on that. So I was so fortunate to get to work with her a great deal on that. But also, I just have to have a special note here that um, the STEAM team that started in Easton, of which the STEAM night is an offshoot, started by me just reaching out to the S of STEAM and just starting and saying, science teachers, will you be willing to help? And she uh, and Maria Annunziato, her co-chair for the department, were really literally the three of us were the STEAM team. And then uh, it's starting up again, but it did take a hiatus at COVID. And I think right before COVID, we had almost 70 people, 7-0 on it, including wow. a lot of community members. We did a lot of great work. So I am just forever indebted to, to them and to her for um, you know, helping me start something that really still, I think, is ahead of the state because they're still STEM. And we'll, we're going to win them over, but we're steam all the way. So um, it's a great loss to the district, certainly to the department. And um, I wish her very well, of course. OK, great. I'll go ahead and read her letter. Um, Dear Dr. Cabral, I'm writing to formally communicate my intention to resign from Eastern Public Schools on July 17, 2024. I have enjoyed my position tremendously, and especially the very talented colleagues with whom I've worked. The families of Easton are very fortunate to have such dedicated educators and staff in our schools. I have learned so much from 20 years of teaching physics and environmental science at Oliver Ames High School. My husband and I are also thankful for the terrific education that our daughters, Mary, class of 2010, and Susan, class of 2014, received from Easton Public Schools. Mary and Susan are both educators, largely because of the capable and caring staff here. It is time that I transition to a part-time opportunity to allow me to spend more time focusing on family responsibilities. I look forward to continued involvement in the Ames Free Library Board of Directors and activities with Holy Cross Parish. I wish you and Easton Public Schools continued success serving Easton families, and I'm sure I will continue to connect with you in my volunteer work in Easton. Best regards, Nancy Donahue. Okay, any, um, any comments from school committee members? Yes, of course. Ahead, you know I have yes. to talk. <laughs> well, you know, at some point, if I'm still on school committee, there's going to be people that will retire that I don't know. So <laughs> anyway. We're not there yet. <laughs> um, Nancy did work at the Easton Middle School when the ninth, well, when it was Easton Junior High, she would come over and teach ninth grade at, at the school for a bit. And then at being department chair, she was always around. So I saw her a lot. And I taught both of her daughters, who I love. Um, she is amazing. Nancy is amazing. Always, I just I remember during COVID, she and Joey and Kaufman planting new plants in front of that sign out in front of OA because the ones that they had were growing over the sign. So 
they strategically planted plants that wouldn't grow over the sign. But she is tremendous, and, and I know she's going to love retirement because it's the best thing in the world. And um, she's, excuse me, she's just a great person, and she will be missed. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Any other committee members? <coughs> Can I say something? Or student? Oh, yes, please, Marvel. Yes. Um, so Mrs. Donahue, um, she was the science team advisor. And I've been a part of science team since last year, and she has been amazing. Um, it's really stressful, especially like the building activities, because you have to build them in advance. And I don't think there was one time where she wasn't next to me holding down the glue <laughs> and then sitting there for hours trying to figure things out. Um, so whether it was science team or like out of the science department, she's always been great. It's great. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? If I may just add that um, Mrs. Donahue is, if I can describe her as just a complete class act. Mm -hmm. She is just such a wonderful human being, an educator. Her dedication to the Easton Public Schools and her community is really admirable, and I just wish her the best of luck. It's been an honor to work with her. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Okay, so um, I none of my kids actually had, um, I don't think any of my kids had Mrs. Donahue, but I'm certainly aware of her um, her leadership and her, her impact and presence in the science department. So we certainly wish you well in retirement um, and congratulate you on culminating a wonderful career. And thank you so much for all of your service. Okay. Um, should re remind me, we don't have to vote. Yes, we have to vote. We do, okay, all right. See, unless I see vote written down. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, let's see. So I make a motion to um, accept the retirement of Nancy Donahue. Can I get a second on that? Second with regret, DeLuca. And roll call vote. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Percio, yes. All right. Thank you. Next up, excuse me, on the agenda is a vote to, pardon me one second, um, approve the minutes from the December 19th, 2023 regular meeting um, and the executive session from um, December 19th as well. So for the regular meeting minutes, um, did anybody have any questions, comments, or edits? No. Right. Excuse me one second. Hold on. Okay, that's how it's going to be all night. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, um, can I get a motion to approve the regular session meeting minutes for December 19th, 2023? Wiseman, so moved. And can I get a second? Luma, second. Roll call vote. Luca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Perseo, yes. Great. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And for the executive session minutes from December 19th, um, before we vote uh, whether or not to approve uh, with or without release, does anybody have any um, questions and want to hold these for discussion in an executive session at a later date? Um, so with that, uh, we can either vote to approve and release at this time or approve and not release at this time. Um, I, I think I would like to make a motion to approve and release at this time, um, but would certainly, you know, be open to hearing anybody um, who thinks otherwise. Was that a motion or are you just? Yeah, yeah. yep. So I'll make the motion to okay. approve uh, and release at this time. Can I get a second? Second, Loomis. And roll call vote. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Percy, yes. Great. Um, next up on the agenda is the schedule of payments. So since the last time the committee met, uh, we have processed and approved warrant 046S, uh, 
And let's see, I'm just double checking to see if 48 has completed its path. And 048S is in process of being approved. Okay. So next up is our student representative update. So Marvel? Yes. So um, in coming back from the winter break, there has been a lot of planning and adjustments um, and problem solving. So in EMS, first specifically, um, EMS grade eight has moved to the first floor um, as they've been seeing some behavioral issues. But with this um, new adjustment, um, there have been a lot of positive, there's been a lot of positive feedback um, and overall, staff has been valuing education over punishment, which is great since we're not really into the consequence and reward um, system. That's questionable. Um, they also have class meetings, and they're going to continue to have class meetings um, and talking about behavior um, and how to further either talk to your teachers or your students um, and, of course, you know, anti-bullying. Um, in RO, um, the classroom and the faculty votes for students of the month have been occurring and has recently um, had recently come and it will be another one for January, of course. Um, and these students have the opportunity to have meetings with the administration um, where they discuss things that they want to see change or things that they have been experiencing, things that they enjoy, which is also great. So there's more student voice um, even in the elementary schools. Um, the Scholastic Book Fair is also coming up, and the PTA secured funds to ensure book access to all, which is also amazing, as um, there has been, like, like when I was in RO, there are obviously times where I've seen students that couldn't get books because they either didn't have money or, you know, they forgot their money, so now is a good opportunity for each student to get um, a book of their choice. Um, and then finally, at OA, we have seen a lot more student uh, feedback regarding courses and course selection, um, specifically the um, business classes. So business, a business course is mandatory at OA in order to graduate, um, but not many selections are available. So students have been asking for um, a greater variety of selections, not only in the business, of course, um, but in other classes because they feel that there is less engagement in classes that they feel um, they must take in order to graduate. Um, and they had discussed that the Mass State Senate um, has a bill available to public testimony on whether a semester of personal finance should be mandatory, and the sign-up is on MASR website. Um, so that is, in specific to business, um, that is something, um, an occurrence. Um, and then in lieu of mid-years, the Student Advisory Board and I um, had a meeting where we were brainstorming ideas regarding um, some unity within all of EPS, as sometimes it feels kind of distant, like from away to Blanche Ames, it's a little distant because like they're so young and we're so old. Um, so in this um, kind of thought process, we were thinking of possibilities of having a like large EPS peer service group where either people from away in the middle school or just away would either, you know, like tutor or they can just go and visit classes and discuss experiences or um, student feedback entirely and um, go across all schools so we can discuss um, like having like a legitimized group, whether that be like a website or um, just like a, a form or a survey of sorts. And um, Ms. Kavanaugh has been working diligently to figure out the logistics of that as well. That would be cool. all right. Yeah. Great, great update. Yeah, comments from committee members? Anything we want to discuss? I, I, I like everything you said. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the idea of having some old teachers come back. Yeah. I think it's great to see your former teachers mm -hmm. as well. I think it's great for the teachers to see you guys. Yeah. Um, but for the little ones to see big kids mm -hmm. and what they're doing and how that turns out is awesome. If they could get a buddy or a reading buddy or a tutor or a yeah. project. Yeah. Someone to hold the glue. You know, all those things. <laughs> you think, so. Yeah. I really, I, I love the spirit of student voice and advocacy at all levels. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's something that um, we've definitely seen at OA for a long time, which is appropriate um, for uh, for that age level. But it's really nice to see that concept filtering down um, to um, to even the younger students. So, Absolutely. great update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Alrighty, so next up is a vote to appoint members to subcommittees. So with um, with Michelle's departure and the appointment of Kelly Persio to the school committee, uh, we do need to assign 
um, or get volunteers for <laughs> um, committee assignments that um, that are left vacant that were left vacant by Michelle. Um, but this is an opportunity to shuffle things around so that it's not just you know a, a kind of a one to one um, assumption of, of past duties. So um, so with that, I just I know we have we all received a packet um, that has the committees that Michelle was on highlighted. So those were the naming subcommittee. So this is the school committee subcommittee um, that is putting together, um, excuse me, um, is, uh, is updating sort of the, the guidelines and protocols around naming spaces um, through private donations. So this one does not, um, I think, you know, uh, by definition, the subcommittee should have at least two um, members, um, uh, at least two. And so it still does um, with Nancy and Lauren, but we, there was interest um, from several school committee members on being on that subcommittee. So I think we could assign a third person if somebody had um, interest in capacity. So naming subcommittee is one that we need to take a look at for sure and then the human rights committee this is a town-wide committee and a member of the school committee is appointed to serve on this committee as the school committee's representative um, and so the you would be uh, meeting with the other members of the human rights committee which includes um, members of the um, eastern population at large who are appointed to this and some representatives from other um, committees in Easton. So Michelle was the school committee's only wrap on to that committee. And I think that covers, let's see, that was all that was highlighted. Just do a quick double check to make sure I'm not missing one. I thought, yeah, I feel like she had more than two. Um, but maybe. name against another, but I wondered about that as well. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe we, because we had done these at the beginning of the year um, or mid year she, after she last election. In the superintendent's advisory committee, but. Yes. Yep. And that's just a rotation right. of really anybody who uh, wants to attend. All right. So, so it's definitely, so those two for sure. Um, but this, you know, we can certainly have conversations about any other um, committee assignments if there are members who. Um, feel like they, you know, um, have any, you know, if, if you're on a committee that you don't feel is, is a great fit for you or that somebody else might have a strong interest in, we can certainly um, discuss moving things around there. So I guess, does anybody have any committees that they're on right now that they would be interested in coming off of? Or would be open to coming off of if, um, if say, you know, if Kelly had a strong interest in something. Um, looking through my assignments, I think um, uh, Kelly, unless <laughs> nobody really, nobody fights me for audit committee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually at the chair of the committee right now, um, and it's it's something that um, is is much as one can enjoy audits, um, I, actually, <laughs> I actually kind of do. But if, if that's something that you would have an interest in, um, uh, you know, I think that's something that um, we could we could discuss. Um, Are there any and then, in yeah. Um, you know, I went through it, and I'm also conscious of the fact that it's the middle of the year, and I don't want to disrupt anything too significantly. So I'm fine with leaving as is for this year and taking on the ones that Michelle had, but also if someone was looking to take a little bit off their plate, I would be more than happy to join others. And there's plenty that I would be happy to have out, so. Um, so Human Rights Committee, are there any other, I know Michelle had been on that for many years. It was something that was very um, near and dear to her. So do any other committee members feel strongly that they would like to be assigned to that? No. Okay. Okay. Um, so Kelly, is that something that you think you'd be able to step into? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. 
So we'll we'll take a formal vote on that. Um, and then let's see. So I think you would then do, she would need and um, Leisha or or Lynn, you may know, recall, will that will she need to be sworn into that on the town side? I believe she does, yes. Yeah, okay. she will. But I don't know okay. what your next meeting is, but um, it's available on the town website. I just checked. I think it's the second Tuesday of the month, so theoretically okay. next week. Okay. Okay. All right. So after we vote, the, um, I think Lynn will Lynn can send a note over to the okay. town, letting them know of that update. Um, Did you? Have okay. Great. Just before I take this. No. Okay. Confirming. Nancy just got back. I just wanted to make sure okay. I didn't take something that she was intending to ask for. I have enough. Okay. Please. Thank uh -huh. you. You do have. Time. Yeah. You also have the yeah. choice now of offering to give some up. Yeah, Nancy. Yeah. Is there anything you wanna <laughs> step back from? No. <laughs> No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I like all my committees, but I just okay. there's enough right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Um, so naming subcommittee. So this is um, currently um, it was Nancy. Well, Nancy and Lauren. Do you yeah. feel like it needs a third person? I don't think so. We have Caroline. We have Elizabeth Starr. We have um, Arthur Depina. We have Andrea. And Andrea. So we have a good group. And I think we're good, you know, with two school committee members. That's you're fine. Welcome if you want yeah. to join us. You're, yeah, you're more than welcome. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kelly, do you have any strong feelings about that either way? I don't have strong feelings either way. Like I said, I, okay. I'm coming in mid-year, so the least okay. I can be the better. Okay. All right. So why don't we leave that then with Nancy and Lauren? Um, Kelly, we'll have you. Um, we'll vote. We'll we'll propose that you vote. We'll propose a vote for you to join the Human Rights mm -hmm. Committee, um, and then we'll have to. We'll do this all again mm -hmm. later in the spring after right. the election. Um, so I think that'll. I think that'll do it. So um, would somebody like to make a motion then to um, for the school committee to appoint Kelly Percio? as representative to the Human Rights Committee. So moved, DeLuca. Second, a second, Wiseman. Thank you. Roll call vote. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Percio, yes. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. <coughs> All right. Um, next on the agenda is the schedule of the school committee meetings for 2024-2025 first reading. Dr. Cabral? Thank you. You will notice that on the list of uh, proposed school committee meeting dates, two are highlighted, and it is noted for your information that November 7th is usually the date of the Mass Association of School Committee and School Superintendent Joint Conference, and the 13th is currently being considered as the OA Parent Conference in our next year schedule, which isn't being proposed just yet. Um, so we are wondering if those are dates that you wanted to avoid and perhaps an alternative could be Wednesday, November 13th. Okay, can I, can I comment? Yes, yes. please. Okay, yes. so sep October 10th is, um, I believe Yom Kippur is from the 11th to the 12th. So if we meet on October 10th, that might be a problem. So I was going to suggest October 9th for that meeting. That would be a Wednesday. Then, October 24th, fine. Then on that November 7th, I was going to suggest that we go to November 6th and not even have that November 13th in there because um, it, then it makes it close to November 21st. And then December 12th, in, instead of doing the 12th and the 19th in December, moving December 12th to December 5th with November 21st. So do you understand what I'm, can I, should I repeat that? Yeah, no, I think, um, I think I'm on the same page as you with moving the December 12th to the 5th. My thought, and, and good call on the October, and we'll talk about that in a second. My thought was, um, was no to, no to November 7th, um, and then keep the 13th or 14th of November. I think the 14th is fine this year. Um, we also had it, there, the, that was the same night as high school conferences this year, and it wasn't an issue. 
um, because it, that's not it's not like a back to school night where the bell schedule's going off every five minutes all night long. Um, so we did we did have it on OA school conference night. Um, you know, of course, if any committee members, um, Kelly, if that you know if you'll have somebody at OA, and that would be a problem, um, will, we can yeah. you know, certainly. Yeah, I, I was able to do mine during the day, so it wasn't an issue. Um, so I was thinking October 24th, November 14th, skip November 21st, and then do December 5th. So Nancy, what was your... Say that again, Jen, say that again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so um, keep October 24th. Yep. Then do November 14th and then December 5th. Do you think that's leaving too many gaps? And, no only meet and November, November 21st, and November 21st, right? Can, can I if, add something? Uh, sure, if we were meeting on the 14th, I wouldn't meet on the 21st. Right, oh yeah. So, so just one meeting in November. I don't think that we would need to cancel October 10th. Uh, Yom Kippur. That's what I'm asking you and, yeah, no. and Jackie and Yom whoever. Kippur is on Saturday the 12th, so it starts the night before, which would be the 11th. Oh, okay. So the 10th is okay. Oh, okay. Okay, good. But okay. I, I really appreciate okay. that. Um, for, so that first October meeting usually coincides with the professional status meeting. Right. Professional status night. Mm -hmm. Would we think, I know that's, typically been the first Thursday of October. So do we think that professional status would likely be on the third? Isn't it just before our first meeting in October? It, I don't think if it, it if it actually coincides to our meeting, then that's fine. I didn't know if I, if it gets scheduled sort of independently and we try to schedule to it or if it's the reverse. They, it's the yeah, reverse. it's the reverse. Historically okay. it's always been our meeting day, whichever Thursday, first Thursday that we meet in October. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So then for November, so I think, I think we're looking at either as Nancy suggested, do um, maybe earlier in earlier in the week of the fourth. So, cause I think the conference is actually Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so either, you know, the fourth or fifth, well, and then keep the 21st or skip that week and go 14th and then December 5th. To me, that makes sense, but I, I like that, yes. The 14th and the 5th? Yeah, and then December 19th. Yep, yep. yeah. And then the rest of them all seemed, the rest of the year seemed fine. So yep. one in November, but we don't think that would present any problems. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I think with the holiday. Oh, yeah, no, well, this, uh, no. Yep. Go yeah, ahead. but I think with, with Thanksgiving falling on the 28th. Um, and um, and Kel Kelly, also, we find that if it comes that there, there's a lot going on, we need to meet. We call, we call it a workshop, and we post it and everything. So, okay, so we, can, we can always throw something in if we have to. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I just confirm? October 10th, yep. October 24th, yep. November 14th, yep. December 5th. Yep. And the 14th is the parent night. O yes. No, October 10th. Oh, November the, 14th. You mean the high the, school, the high school yes. parent night. Yep. Potentially. <coughs> yeah. Potentially. We'll be voting on that later this month. Okay, but then yep. we'll. But it could be, this could be November 13th, right? Potentially, oh, it could be November thirteenth. I don't know. I think they're usually a Thursday, but that's there's always options during the day. So I'm sure I'll want to attend, but I'm sure I can check. Would daytime? Would daytime? Does daytime tend to work for you? If not, we can we could look for another day that week. I don't want to as long as interrupt I'm not your ability to travel to... that week. It'll, okay. it'll work. So okay, I have to travel right. once a quarter. One of them will conflict with the September twelfth, but I may be able to dial in as hybrid. So okay. Um, but it should work. We'll make it work. I'm sure okay. it work. It's on Christmas. I know. That's always fun. Um, Alrighty. Okay, so that was our first reading. We'll have to do a second reading 
I apologize. Um, Can I just ask one more question? Oh, October sure, of course. Yeah. October 5th start at 5 o'clock. October 10th? October 10th, excuse me. The new with teacher, the professional with status. With the professional oh. status. Yes. Reception. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, we, hold on. So we normally do. Thirty. So we the professional six, status session is nor, normally begins at six thirty. Five thirty, yeah, and then we we start at six thirty. Right. Yeah. But these are yep, all so, at six. So we would. Yep. So October tenth would be a six thirty start. For the meeting, right? For the school, yeah, for, for our meeting. Or we okay. can start the reception at 5. It's entirely up to you. What's best oh. for the staff? Yeah, maybe, the, I think, maybe keep the 5.30 in case any of them have, you know, friends or family who are coming who, okay. yeah, need to, don't get out of work until 5. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meeting to start at 6.30, got it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. And I'm sure this will will flex as we need to, as always. So okay. Alrighty. Um so no vote on that tonight. And then next item on the agenda is the January first enrollment update. Dr. Cabral. So this district enrollment, we get this report from Desi every first of the month. Um, but we like to keep you abreast in October and in January. October are the figures that count most primarily for uh, with DESE for things like entitlement grants, funding, uh, things of that nature. And so uh, January is just a quick update on our current enrollment. I will say that I think at this time last year we had um, PK enrollment in the 90s. So we're quite ahead of that already. And just remember that pre-K is rolling admission as students age three years old. And so that could increase by the end of the year. Um, how that will impact kindergarten numbers next year, we're not sure. This last year we had a few more students. This year we have uh, quite a bit more. So we may have additional kindergarten sections necessary, um, depending on how many of those students are coming for kindergarten. Other than that, there isn't too much remarkable from the last month to this month. I think overall we gained about a dozen students across the board. Um, so, so enrollment is slowly increasing for sure. Okay. I have a question. I don't know if I'm reading this wrong, but there's only one homeschool student in 11th grade. And that's it? No, actually, I would, I would disregard the homeschool line. Okay. Uh, it's really outplaced students. That's the important line. We have about, we usually have about somewhere in the 30s for homeschooled students across the board. So homeschool and outplace is the same, same line no. item? No, no, no. no. It's uh, not homeschooled listed. is separate, but it's not on here. Right. Got it. It, it, it usually isn't on here. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I know what that is. So homeschool, yes, we don't, sorry. Go yeah, ahead. to homeschool, um, is it because home homeschool without an IEP does not count in terms of our student counts to DESE? Is that, is that accurate? Um, I think we have more than one student who's homeschooled on an IEP right now. We do. So this number doesn't reflect that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would disregard that line. Mm -hmm. We can give you an accurate homeschool number if you'd like. But the outplaced students, those would be students in um, special education outplacement. And pre-K is three and four. Ages? Ages three and yes. four. Um, does, do any other committee members have any questions or comments on the enrollment report? Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Dr. Cabral. Um, next on the agenda is public comment. And since I'm not in the room, do we have any members of the public present? 
so many. Lindsay's a, she's not a resident, <laughs> so. <laughs> Maybe that's the advantage of having an own parent. People will come. Doubt it. in the building. <laughs> Just Hopefully. saying. Hopeful. They'll be like, where? <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, the next up on the agenda is superintendent notes. Dr. Cabral? I just have a couple, a uh, few things this evening. First, I'm really happy to announce that we were, we are the recipients of a $250,000 grant for a math acceleration wow. academy. Wow. It will be for grades three and up wow. in February vacation and April vacation weeks. So obviously it is elective. Mm -hmm. It is a four-day program because the first day of both of those weeks are holidays. Mm -hmm. And um, there's some very substantial data out there about the improvement that students have made in their math performance as a result of these four days. They also receive a special in these days as well, whether it's art, music. So there is some um, extra extraordinary other than it, it's, it's called math academy but they do have some extraordinary opportunities faculty are paid uh, through this grant to work during those weeks uh, that will be advertised very soon because we need to find out what our capacity is for student enrollment just like our summer school programs if we don't have enough interest or uh, opportunity because it is very close and people may have already have, have plans for vacation weeks. Uh, if we don't have enough staff, both teachers, service providers, specialists, and paraprofessionals, all of those will be needed. We will uh, advertise outside of Eastern Public Schools, just like we do for summer school. Mm -hmm. But we will advertise to our staff first. So I want to give a special shout out to Craig Davidson, who is our Director of Student Services. He had been a recipient of this grant in another district he brought this to our attention applied for it and we did we were successful in getting it so we're we're very excited about this opportunity for our students and for our staff and look forward to reporting back to you on how that goes will there be a cost or is it all included in the grant no it's free for the students they will be provided lunch and transportation as well if we're able to arrange it in this amount of time it's all based on uh, it's all Paid for by the grant. Wonderful. It's amazing. It is amazing, yes. It's a full day. Next is, I That's did wonderful. see a first draft. It wasn't complete, so I'm, I don't have any information to share, really. But I did get a first pass on a, a significant chunk of the youth health survey that was taken at the high school and the middle school in December. So I met with the data analyst that is working on that. She's putting together a report. And then, of course, there will be a presentation to the school committee and the public uh, on those results. It was interesting to see that we actually now have five data points. I remember starting this process. It's every other year, and we already now have five data points. So we're going to uh, next year, next iteration, which is two years from now, we'll be dropping off the 2015 test results, and we'll keep five going forward. It is also, I will note one thing that was very interesting and and had an impact across the board on a lot of the data was that our last administration was in 2021 when students were actually returning from COVID. And you see a lot of peaks and valleys that are directly contributable to that, and, and you can see how that could happen. Some risky behaviors went down significantly, but considering that students were at home and really weren't engaging with peers very often. That makes sense. There were also uh, a lot of items that were significantly higher, like some mental health concerns and feelings of depression, which certainly are indicative of isolation during that time. Um, I am happy to, to note that there were, wherever we had a lot of those peaks, we are seeing our, our coming back pretty much to baseline. So. Um, you know, I know that there's a lot of concern about the lasting impacts of COVID on our children, but at least based on this one data point, we are seeing that things are leveling out and sort of getting back to normal in terms of the factors that are um, indicated on this particular survey. So we look forward to sharing that information with you. I just I want to thank our partners at Easton Wings of Hope as well as the YMCA who are funding a, a 
chunks of this for us and also doing the uh, data analysis. So we're very appreciative of their efforts. This week, yesterday, I met with two of the four human resource director finalists that the screening committee put forward to me. We certainly have a high caliber of applicants. I'm very happy about that. I meet two more tomorrow. Uh, then I will meet with the team. They are doing site visits here, and staff and students that have the opportunity to meet with them do have a Google Sheet to fill out. I'll be going through all of that feedback at the beginning of next week, meeting with the executive team, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make an offer to someone next week, enter negotiations, and um, get somebody here. Obviously, they are, um, the majority of them are currently working in other areas, and so it's going to be a little bit of a lag for when they can join us. I would expect nothing less than for them to ask for at least a couple of weeks to a few weeks transition time, and so um, we're happy that that is moving forward. Again, a big thank you to the committee members who put in a considerable amount of time, meeting with many candidates, going over a lot of documentation and um, information, and really put forth for, uh, I consider, very high caliber candidates for consideration, so we're happy about that. We have begun our budget process. We did our review with the cabinet. They are now bringing it during the January and February staff meetings to all staff members in the district. We want to make sure that all of the staff that is working with our students has an opportunity to let us know. First, we review the strategic plan. What, what gaps are still remaining? What, what do we, achievement do we need to um, increase and what are the resources that they believe will get us there. We'll then take that information in March, put together a proposal, itemize that in terms of the dollar amounts of each, and make an initial presentation to the school committee, um, typically at the beginning of April, for your feedback, your input, and also uh, ultimately your vote that we'll bring forward to the town. And finally, the early college and career is going very well at the high school and the Ed Alliance that we are in an intermunicipal agreement with on with 10 of our colleague districts uh, is going really well and our students have a lot of great opportunities um, and I actually will be meeting with uh, Commissioner Jeff Riley on this topic on Monday so uh, I look forward to filling him in on what we've been doing again we're the first um, collaborative of its kind in, um, in this area and maybe even in Massachusetts. So I look forward to filling him in on how that's progressing and uh, seeing if we can get some additional funding to help us provide more opportunities. That's all I have for right now. Great. All right. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Dr. Cabral? All right. So next on the agenda are assistant superintendent notes. So Mrs. Pruitt? Thank you so much. Our district's professional development day, as I've been mentioning, will be next Friday, January 12th. Um, this is a day where there's no school for students, but staff, um, all Unit A members, which are teachers um, and counselors, uh, nurses, as well as our paraprofessionals and ABA techs, will be um, here at Oliver Ames High School, actually, for our professional development day. The day is focused, as I've mentioned before, on diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility with a keynote speaker, Cornelius Minor. You're more than welcome to attend to the school committee. I can send you information on that keynote address, followed by sessions being offered by some outside partners that we have, as well as um, our own staff members. We have close to 60 sessions running um, for, in, for four separate sessions, not 60 each broken up, about 14 to 15 sessions um, running f uh, throughout the day for staff to choose from. It's a nice menu for them to choose from. So our staff um, have been amazing, um, just really promoting their what they're, they feel like they're, they can contribute to their colleagues as well as other um, outside agencies. Dr. Cabral is running a session as well on differentiated instruction, which will be great. Um, so we're really excited about the day. It's probably the biggest thing that's going on in my office currently. <laughs> um, once that day is over, then we have other, other many projects to, to attack. The other thing, as Dr. Cabral had mentioned, is our, our next meeting for our STEAM team 
for those in the community that would like to be a part of it. Um, we, ha we already had a meeting in the fall. Our next meeting is January 22nd at 6 p.m. at Blanche Ames in the professional development room. Um, we are working on planning for our STEAM night, which comes in May, that we're very excited for. Um, that definite date will be determined um, at that meeting. I also just have some MCAS updates. Um, th later this month, we are anticipating that the MCAS report cards will be sent home, or not sent home, via um, electronic uh, accessibility. So those will, on each school, those will be um, provided according to the commissioner's weekly memo. Um, so more information to come on that. We usually send, it ho send them home later in January or early February. Um, again, it's an electronic um, link that families can access with the information on our MCAS report cards. I also, with that being said, the presentations for MCAS with the report cards will be next month. Um, and then I do have our MCAS dates, which will also be posted on our website. Um, the, middle, the Richardson Olmsted and the Easton Middle School are doing something a little bit unique this year. They will be testing on the whole school on the same days. Mm -hmm. So grades three, four, and five for ELA will be testing, uh, English language arts will be testing on April's 11th and 12th, on April 11th and 12th. And math will be tested on May 8th and 9th. And at the middle school, grade um, six, seventh, and eighth for ELA, English language arts, will be tested on April 3rd and 4th. And math will be tested on the 14th and 15th. We do have science, technology, and engineering in grade five, which um, for grade five is two sessions, which will be May 15th and 16th. For grade eight, it will be on May 16th. We also have grade eight gets the whammy this year. They have a civics pilot, um, which we are mandated to um, have at least half of our, our student population in the eighth grade take the test, or we can test all students. And we've decided to test all students. Mm -hmm. um, we will get the results back, so that will be very informative for us. And we felt it's a really good opportunity for all students to have experience um, with, with the assessment, and that is on May 22nd. As far as the high school goes, um, grade nine physics will be June 4th and June 5th. The high school test dates are set, where grades three through eight, there are windows that we get to choose from. But the high school dates, like I just said, are set in stone. They are the same throughout the Commonwealth, throughout all public schools. Um, grade 10 ELA will be testing on March 26th and 27th. And grade 10 math will be um, May 21st and May 22nd. And there are some windows for makeup tests if a student is out. And that's all I have this evening. I will note that <coughs> being able to test all students in the school on the same day is a huge advantage for us. Uh, there are a lot of things that we need to put in place. Uh, it changes the period cycles for the rest of the students in the school when you're testing one grade for two days, another grade for two days, another grade for two days. It changes the bell schedule. It changes a lot of things and really kind of takes over the month. We've never been able to do this before because we were never one-to-one -one before. Now that we have that capability and all students have a device and they have the capability of being able to do the MCAS on our infrastructure, which has been updated, we now can do this. And so the disruption to the entire school building is really minimized. So we're very happy to be able to, and of course we have a fabulous technology team that is clearly going to have a lot more on their hands during that time, but they're taking it on and they, they've got this down. So um, after a couple of years of trial runs with the one-to-one -one and improving our infrastructure, this is going to make a huge difference to not making March in particular seem like the MCAS month. So we're, we're very excited about that. We hope it goes smoothly. If it doesn't, we'll tweak what we need to, but it's going to make a big difference. This was great. Really great not to have that disruption. Mm. <coughs> Any other um, questions or comments for Mrs. Pruitt? 
think I would like to get if you could if you could email the info about um, the keynote session. Yes. For PD absolutely. to all of us, I think I would like to attend if I can. Great. I would too. Likewise. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So next up on the agenda, our school committee notes. So Nancy, do you have anything for this week? Um, just one thing, I believe. Uh, mid years at OA are starting the day after Martin Luther King Day, which is also the four day weekend after the PD for the teachers. And I, the kids are already like, we only have five classes left. And, and they're getting, right, five classes. So they're getting a little nervous. So I want to wish good luck to all of the uh, students taking mid years, especially the freshmen for their first time. So good luck to them. Happy studying. <laughs> And don't, and the other thing, I think there will be school on Monday, so don't call Dr. Cabral. Yeah. Just wake up and go to school. Okay, that's it. All right, thank you. Jackie, anything for this week? No, nothing for this week. Thanks, Jen. Okay. All right, great. Um, Lauren, anything for this week? Um, I do. Um, first is um, I have a, a first-hand um, Thumbs up from my son on the North Playground at RO. He loved it. His only complaint was the balls in the Gaga pit weren't right. They were kickball balls, and they should be different. I don't know. But well, the surfacing can't be done yet, so we just it's tell him it'll get better. Okay. <laughs> as soon as it warms up, we'll get the proper surfacing in there and the proper balls. Yeah, I'll help it's my people call older. your people. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I do not want to disappoint. <laughs> But he, he said it was great. Um, and also on January 23rd, um, the LPAC is having a multilingual family gathering at Blanche Ames at 630. And um, they, I know in the RO newsletter, there was a link to it. And it was in all the different languages, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that um, that families um, who wouldn't normally be, you know, reading and connecting with, with the information when it's, you know, in, in English, they, they see it in their respective language and, and know that they are, you know, more than welcome and that it, this is for them. So um, I really hope it's a successful gathering. That's it. Okay. Kelly, anything for this week? Uh, yes. So last week I had the opportunity, thanks to Dr. Cabral, to set foot in all of the schools now because I got to see Blanche James and it is beautiful. So I was very excited um, to have a chance to see everything that's there, all the accommodations for all the different types of students that we have in the building, all the different ages and stages um, and all of the, um, just the way it's designed. It does really feel like small community schools. Um, my son was upset that he did not get the tour of the school that will be his next year. Um, he is very excited to go next year, but he is very happy that mom endorses it um, and says that he's going to love it. So it was awesome to see. It was great um, having gone to all the meetings and voted for the school to actually see it come to fruition. All right, great. Um, let's see, just a couple of quick updates. Um, uh, athletics, uh, we had the uh, OA hosted a couple of tournaments over the break. So we had basketball and um, I think uh, maybe wrestling. So anyway, um, the, the campus was still active, even though school was not in session last week. So um, thanks for all of the volunteers who and coaches who give up their time over breaks to make those happen. And then um, the music department. So OA is sending, I don't know the number, but I know we are sending several students. Um, off to the Southeast Mass Senior District Festival this weekend. So um, congratulations on those who auditioned and made it, and we hope it's a wonderful weekend of learning and performance for you. Um, that was all I had for notes for this week. Okay. So with that... Um, Jackie's still on? Oh, I'm yeah. Yes, Jackie's still on. Yeah, no, I'm all set. You did? Okay, my apologies. Yeah. I didn't hear no, it's okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I would like to make a motion um, to enter into executive session, not to return to open session 
for the purpose of um, discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining for the Eastern Educators Association Unit A coaches, coaches stipends pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, subsection 21A3. And in my opinion, having this discussion in public would be detrimental to the bargaining position of the school committee. Can I get a second? DeLuca, second. Roll call vote. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. Loomis, yes. Percio, yes. All right, so we will exit this meeting and I will connect with you all virtually in the next, in the exact session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.